In the coming years, artificial intelligence is probably going to change your life and likely the entire world. But people have, have had a hard time agreeing on exactly how. The following uh, which I'm going to say are some excerpts from World Economic Forum interview where we renowned computer science professor and AI expert Stuart Russell helps separate the sense from the nonsense. There's a big difference between asking a human to do something and giving that as the objective to an AI system. When you ask a human to get you a cup of coffee, you don't mean this should be their life's mission and nothing else in the universe matters. Even if they have to kill everybody else in Starbucks to get you the coffee before it closes, they should do that. No, but that's not what you mean exactly. All the other uh, things that we mutually care about, they should factor into your behavior as well. The problem with the way we build AI systems is we give them a fixed objective. The algorithms require us to specify everything in the objective. If you say, can we fix the acidification of the oceans? Yeah, you could have a cat uh, catalytic reaction that does that extremely efficiently, but it consumes a quarter of the oxygen in the atmosphere, which would apparently cause us to die fairly slowly and unpleasantly over the course of um, several hours. So. How do we avoid this problem? You, you may say, okay, well, just be more careful about specifying the objective. Uh, don't forget the atmospheric oxygen. And, and then, of course, some side effect of the, of the reaction in the ocean poisons all the fish. Okay, well, I meant don't kill the fish either. And then, well, what about the seaweed? Well, don't do anything that's going to cause all the seaweed to die. And on and on and on, we give them commands. And the reason that we don't have to do that with humans is that humans often know what they don't, that they don't know all the things that we uh, care about. If you ask a human to get you a cup of coffee and you happen to be in the Hotel George Sand in Paris, where the coffee is uh, ar around 30 euros a cup, it's entirely reasonable to come back and say, well, it's 13 euros, are you sure you want it? Or uh, I could go next door and get, and get another one. And it's a perfectly normal thing for a person to, do, person to do that. To ask, I'm going to repaint your house uh, when, you, uh, when you ask a human, He'll probably say, is, is it okay if I take off the uh, drain pipes and then put them back? We don't think of this as a terribly sophisticated capability. It's common sense. We don't think, uh, so, but AI systems don't have that because the way we build them now, they have to know the full objective. If we build systems that know what they don't know, uh, what the objective is, then they start to exhibit these behaviors like asking permission uh, before getting rid of the oxygen in the atmosphere. Now in all these senses, control over the AI system comes from the machine's uncertainty about what the true objective is. And it's when you build machines that believe with, uh, that believe with certainty that they have the objective, that's when you get this sort of psychopathic behavior. And I, and, and I think we see the same thing in humans well. So what happens when general purpose AI hits the real economy? How do things change? Can we adapt? Well, this is a very old point, but amazingly, Aristotle actually has a passage where he says, if we had fully automated weaving machines and uh, plectrums that could pluck the lyre and produce music without any humans, then we wouldn't need any workers. Now that idea, which I, which I think it was Keynes who called it technological unemployment in 1930, is very obvious to people. They think, yeah, of course, if the machine does the work, I'm going to be unemployed. You, you can think that about the warehouses that companies are currently operating for e-commerce. They are half automated. The way it works is that an old warehouse where you got ton, tons of stuff piled up all, all of the place and, and humans go and rummage around and then bring it back and send it off. But now there's a robot who goes and gets the shelving unit and contains the thing that you need. But the human has to pick the object out of the bin or off the shelf. Because that's still, I don't know how, but it's too difficult for the robot. But at the same time, would you make a robot that accurately uh, enough, that is accurate enough to be able to pick pretty much any object within any wide variety of objects that you can buy? That would, at a stroke, eliminate three or four million jobs. Now, there is an interesting story that E.M. Foster wrote where everyone is entirely machine dependent. The story is really about the fact that if you hand over the management of your civilization to machines, you then lose the incentive to understand it yourself or to teach the next generation on how to understand it. You can see uh, the, mov the movie WALL-E actually as a modern version where everyone is enfeebled and 
infantilized by the machine and that hasn't been possible up to now. We put a lot of our civilization into books but the books can't run it for us. So we always have to teach the next generation. If you work it out, it's about a trillion percent years of teaching and learning in an unbroken chain that goes back uh, lots of years. But what happens if that chain breaks? What happens if the uh, generation that comes after us don't know how this particular AI thing was built? I think that's something we have to understand as AI moves forward. The actual date of arrival of general purpose AI, you are not going to be able to pinpoint uh, as a single day. It's, it's also not the case that it's all or nothing. The, the impact is going to come, uh, the impact of AI, and it's going to uh, be increasing over the days. So with every advance in AI, it significantly expands the range of tasks that it can do by itself. So in that sense, I think most experts by the end of the century, we are very, very likely to have general purpose AI. The, the median is something around 2045, but uh, it's a little more on the conservative side. I think the problem is harder than we, than we think. And uh, uh, there is a quote by John McAfee. He was one of the founders of AI. When he was asked this question, he said, somewhere between five and 500 years. And we are going to think, uh, and we are go going to need, I think, several Einsteins to actually uh, make something widespread like that happen for the entire world. Now, this, now this is what uh, AI experts toward Russell said in the conference.